Okay, so you let me know when you want to start, or do you want me to get going now? If you can start now, that'd be great. Thanks, Derek. Okay. All right. Um, well, welcome, everyone. My name is Derek Lamb. I'm actually based in Auckland, New Zealand, so a few hours ahead of you. Um, I think we almost have a, almost the same amount of COVID cases as Western Australia, by the sounds of it. We're uh, getting down to zero. You guys have been doing a pretty good job over there. Um, so our company, Push My Button, are the resellers for Happy or Not, which is the service that you use. Um, Happy or Not's originally, well, and still is, from Finland, um, and we support it in this part of the world. So what we're going to go over today is um, just a bit about the service. So to some of you, some of the bits I may go over might be a little bit basic, but I'm just trying to give, I guess, a bit of a background. Um, uh, so we'll go over a bit of the basic stuff. We'll talk about, you know, the best ways to use it. I'll give you a bit of an update on, you know, things like COVID and stuff like that, how, how that, um, what we can do around that. And then I'll show you a little bit about the reporting. If you've got a question, please either shout out or just pop it into uh, the chat. Or if you want, don't want to ask it during the session, you can obviously um, send that to Kim and he can get it to me later. Okay, so just a bit about the service. So really, I guess the idea of the service is that we're trying to um, put the uh, insights into the practices hands to make the small changes that will help improve your, I guess, patient experience. So um, we're trying to give you a tool that's pretty simple for your patients to use and hopefully um, relatively simple for you to use as well. Um, what I guess the entire solution is, is we obviously have a physical device at the practice. We also have um, the option for using a digital capability and I'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, both of those will send the results to our reporting service that is a cloud-based reporting service. So at this point, you know, there's no requirement for you to sort of download any software or install anything or do anything. This kind of works completely outside of um, the rest of your systems, your practice management system, all that sort of thing. And then those results can be accessed either. You, you, you most likely, if you're using the service already, you'll be receiving uh, weekly and monthly management reports. You can also log on to our reporting portal and I'll show you a little bit about that. Or you can access the results through a free phone app. Okay, so lots of different ways to see the results. So the device that you are using is what we call our Smiley Touch. It's a tablet based device, um, relatively simple, hopefully, for your patients to use. The idea of the tablet is it's only designed for for receiving feedback through the Happy Not service. So there's nothing else that you can actually do on it. Um, there's no sort of management capability on it or admin capabilities on it. It's simply designed for receiving feedback from your patients. Okay. Um, and just a bit of a, uh, a refresher on how it works. So our system is based on asking someone a single question at any one time, okay? And the reason for the single question is we want to get lots of feedback. So we want to make it as, I guess, as simple as possible and to reduce any barriers. So generally we're asking a single question, um, asking them to rate something. Uh, then once they've selected one of the faces, we will we can ask them why they selected the face they did. So we're asking them for a reason or ask them for, um, you know, how we could improve. And then the third level is we, can ask them to give us a comment. Okay, so single question, but perhaps three levels of detail on that question. Okay. Now, um, the 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 reason again behind the single question is that um, we want to get the most feedback we can. So we will accept the results if someone only responds to the first level. Okay, they don't need to respond to all three levels, but obviously the more feedback they give us, hopefully the, the better the insights are. But we will accept just if they accept push just the first level, or even if they give us just both levels or obviously all three levels. What we find is we get about a 50% drop off at each level. Okay, so in a perfect world, we would be aiming for around 20% of your patients to give you feedback. So that's one in five. Um, and then of that 20%, half of those will generally give you um, a follow up option and uh, half again will give you um, uh, open feedback. Okay. 
So just a bit about the actual devices. So um, probably the, the probably the main um, troubleshooting a question we get is oh the device um, isn't you know it's it's doesn't look like it's got enough power or it's just doing something funny. Generally that's when the device is receiving enough power. Um, while there can be issues with the device, generally that's related to the power cords and or the charger. So um, especially if you're receiving you know device that perhaps has come from another location, we just want to make sure it's a uh, the standard charger. So the charger is a tablet charger, not a phone charger. There's a slight difference in the amount of power it provides. Uh, and the other issue I've seen sometimes is if people plug it into a multi-plug and the, the other devices using the multi-plug are quite power hungry, the, our device may not draw enough power. So just check a couple of things like the fact you've got the original charger, it's um, getting enough power that if it is plugged into a multi-plug, maybe try plugging it directly into the wall. Okay. So the rule is generally that the devices are designed to be plugged in um, all the time, but there may be situations where certain practices just don't have that um, capability. So the device itself is a is a tablet. The battery should last for six to eight hours once it's unplugged. So if in your practice you don't have a power cable anywhere that um, you would allow you to put the device in, in a good spot, there is the option of obviously charging it overnight and then putting it out during the day. Okay. Um, generally, the device comes with a Vodaf uh, it'll work on either Vodafone or Optus, which I think works on sort of 99% of the practices um, in the, the PHA or the PHNs. Um, we do have the option to move to, to Wi-Fi if um, that is not an option, but I don't think we've run into that very often. Uh, any of the sort of admin or the survey questions, that sort of thing are, are done um, centrally so you don't have to worry about that and, and that they'll get sort of rolled out sort of quarterly type thing okay so that will just update on uh, the device itself um, and then the follow-up option so there's a few ways it works generally um, you're probably going to see sort of up to five follow-up options they will dictate how long that second screen shows we have had some feedback from some some sites that um, so when you, for those of you that haven't, I guess, seen the device, when you press one of the faces, it automatically takes you to the follow-up screen, okay? Depending on how many follow-ups you have, and generally we've seen with um, Waffer, the, the, there's about five to six follow-ups, which will mean you'll get about 10 to 12 seconds to make your decision on the second screen. We have had a couple of sites um, say, well, that's perhaps not long enough. And look, this may just be demographics or something, but there is the option to make that slightly slower now so while it says no it's not possible to change the display time we have it just added some new capability to do that so if you're finding that some of your patients are saying hey look i didn't have enough time to press that follow-up we can make that change if we need to and then what we call the open feedback is really just the comment that they can leave as that third level of feedback okay so generally we find it is a great uh, benefit to get those comments you'll find the majority of them are positive and it's people calling out um staff members or you know just hey great service that sort of thing you gym but often you will get some um some comments maybe that you know are not that nice so we have a couple of ways of of working those out so basically we have a um a filter a spam filter so our spam filter will pull out things that don't make sense so if there's a bunch of emojis or someone hasn't has just sort of typed a bunch of letters that sort of thing what our system won't pull out is bad language. So if someone types a uh, response with some bad language, that's not very nice. Um, there's also the ability to manually flag that message as spam. So that's something that can be done uh, by the practice person to make sure that's not seen. OK, so there's a couple of ways of doing that. Um, we don't have the option of having more than, you know, anything different than those three phases. So that's generally what you're going to see. And then, um, although I don't think we've used it a lot, there is the ability for multiple language um, on the question and the responses. If someone has um, in the area, you know, a high um, number of a certain demographic who perhaps English is not their first language. OK. Now, um, so with COVID, one of the things we added was, um, so obviously, you know, during the, those, I guess, those sort of uh, march through to, June times, um, 
you know, people were not necessarily so keen on touching the devices. One of the things we added was what we call our smiley link. Okay. And so this is still available and this is able to be used by any site that has a device as well. So what a smiley link is basically um, is just another way for someone to give feedback um, in a touchless manner and they use their phone. So I'm not sure in West Australia if you're using QR codes a lot, but I know in New Zealand we're using it for um, COVID tracing. So we have a COVID app for COVID tracing. And I'm pretty sure in like New South Wales and even Victoria, QR codes are also being used for tracing and that sort of thing. So I know in our part of the, in the East Coast in New Zealand, people are quite used to using QR codes now. Um, and so it's qu working quite well. You definitely don't get as much feedback with this type of solution, but using this to complement the devices is what we have seen as the best way. That way you're giving people uh, the option of either giving feedback on the device directly, which is obviously nice and easy, or if they're a little uncomfortable with that, they can use the QR code. And really what the QR code is, is just a poster with a, um, I guess a barcode or a QR code that someone can just take their phone, point the camera at it and click on it and it will take them to a website and they can give the feedback in exactly the same way as if they're on the device. Okay, so um, at one point we were showing this on the screen of the devices, um, but that's we're not doing that now. So for any site that wants to continue with this capability, you have the ability to use this QR code by putting up um, the poster either on top of the device, so at the top of the device on where it says sort of feedback type thing. The other option is you can actually use the link that is associated with the QR code in um, things like uh, any sort of communication with patients. So if you are doing any sort of emails or anything like that post appointment, there is the ability to include the link for them to also give you feedback. Okay, so the feedback will come into the same, uh, I guess, results area. So it will show it's for your practice. You won't be able to see the difference between those that gave feedback from the smiley link versus the device, but it's just a way to make sure your patients are comfortable, you know, giving you feedback. Uh, and also we're just trying to extend, you know, I guess, to, again, take away any excuse for people giving you feedback. So by allowing them to use their phone, by allowing you to perhaps send that out either uh, for an email, an SMS, or even potentially publishing it on your website. But we, we do want to make sure that people are giving you feedback only after they've actually had an appointment. So some sort of post appointment communication would be the best way. Okay. As far as um, what you need to focus on, so really it's kind of two things. So because it's obviously such a simple system, um, you know, the things we want to focus on is getting lots of feedback and obviously improving the, the, the quality of the feedback. So the quantity of the feedback. So the thing I, I say to people, especially in sort of um, GB practice, is that we really want to be aimed to get trying to kind of 20 percent um, feedback from your patient. So that's one in five. And that, that's not unachievable. But the, really the two things you need to do is just, I guess, encourage people to give feedback. And there's two ways you can do that. You can do that verbally. So as the last person um, to, you know, potentially have contact with the patient, whether, you know, the receptionist or practice manager type person, just saying, hey, thanks for coming in. Please give us some feedback on the way out. Okay, quite a simple one. The other is actually sharing the results or some um, communication about the service. Okay, so with the results you'll get, you'll get two types of reports. You'll get a management type report that says, how are you doing by hour by day? And you may not want to share that information with, with your patients and customers, but you receive an, a second report, which we call our customer interaction report. And that's generally just a big smiley face. And that says how many people were satisfied this month. Okay. Sharing some form of results basically says to your customers, hey, thanks for the feedback. We are reviewing it and we're looking at it and we potentially are making changes with it. Especially if you did make any changes um, you know, to the service, um, you know, sharing that with your customers would would be um, great for keeping the amount of feedback up. OK, if they see that things they've, you know, suggested as improvements have been made, they will think, well, you know, this is great. You know, we told them something, they made a change. 
Okay. The quality of the feedback. So I guess ensuring the data is shared amongst the relevant employees. So the way we see it work the best or the types of organizations that, you know, whether they're health or whatever, that, that seem to get the best out of the system is they are sharing the results with the employees. And that might be in the, you know, the management meetings or something like that. Okay, so it might be weekly meeting. Hey, this is how we did with Happy Not this week, and it might be all good. Move on, or actually, we seem to be seeing a bit of a trend occurring on Thursday afternoons. What do we think is going on? You know, what could we do? Um, you know, to do that, to, to to improve that. The other thing is when when the devices arrive, you know, it's not unusual for people to be a little concerned that it's Big Brother watching them and. Most people come around relatively quickly once they start being able to see the results for themselves. So they they see it's not a black box. Um, they're not getting beaten up all the time because they will you will get a lot more positive feedback than negative. OK, so it will reinforce the job they're doing. So when when people I guess when you're initially implementing the device for those that don't already have it, it's just making sure everyone understands that look, this is the uh, really is a practice solution It's designed for the practice to help improve the patient experience. OK. Um, so letting them know that and then letting them see the results when they start coming in, they'll start seeing the, you know, what's going on. And generally the people, you know, that you're sharing the results with are the ones that can make the biggest change to the patient experience anyway, especially if they're frontline staff. Okay. So, you know, there's not too many rules and regulations about this, but there's just a couple of tips and tricks that will definitely make, um, you know, a more successful deployment. As far as the placement of the device, every um, every practice will be different. And so um, again, it's not hard and fast rules, but the idea of the system is it's designed to be um, for people to give feedback, again, post appointment, okay? So in an ideal world, it's near the door as they walk out the door. The one thing with medical practices is that you need to watch that it's not in the waiting room for people to interact with before they've had, um, you know, the appointment. OK, so perfect world. It's near the door as they leave. Um, and the other thing you just want to focus on is the idea is that it's designed for them to give anonymous feedback. People will feel much more comfortable giving you honest feedback if they don't see someone, you know, watching over their shoulder. So I know in a lot of practices, it's there's not an option of putting it right by the door and it, and it possibly needs to be near uh, the reception or something like that. Just make sure it's facing away so that um, you know people can give their honest feedback as they leave. Um, and and the other thing is you know depending on the size of the practice, just making sure that it you know if cleaners or someone's moved it that it's you know back at where you want it to be and facing the right way. Okay. So that is it in regards to the devices. Were there any questions before I move on? and talk about the reporting. There's nothing in the chat so far, Derek. OK. <clears throat> All right. So when you are set up for um, the service, you should receive a login to our reporting service. OK, so um, there's a couple of ways you can access the reporting service. So um, you can access it on your on your computer, on your desktop, and that it's a it's a browser based service. So you can access it from any browser, and you just log on to the website. You can also um, view it from the app, and so that would be the Happy or Not app, and you can get that either on the Google or the Apple stores. So you should receive an email from support at happy or not with your login details. OK, um, so this would and, and it will give you this sort of thing. Your username would be your email address and your password will be randomly generated. OK. The first thing to do is to change your password and you can do that by just going to my profile, which is down the bottom left and change the password um, to something that you'll remember. Now, just a thing to note. So. Um, you're, you're only going to see results for your practice and other practices are only going to see their results. So there's no one that shouldn't be seeing results in the system. It has security enabled. Okay. 
One of the things that you're going to see, um, sorry, and so on top of the two ways to access the reports, you're also going to receive those weekly and monthly results. OK, those results will, will have a term called a happy index. OK, happy index is, a I guess, a, a index that we have created, and it's really just a weighted average of the button pushes. OK, so the way we calculate this is we give the dark greens 100 percent, the light greens 66 percent, the pinks 33 percent and the reds zero. So those are uh, weighted to give you a happy index and that is what you're compared with so you may see when you when you look in the system you may see you're compared against other practices in um, the pha or even how you're doing in your industry again people can't see how you're doing but it's just giving you a bit of a comparison okay and the happy index is how we compare those okay now when you log into the system, you're going to see a screen that looks a bit like the one on the right hand side here. OK, again, it's going to show you your practice. OK. And the, there's two screens, so we have what's called the quick view and the quick view is designed to give you a quick snapshot of how you're doing. OK, so this is designed to see how we went today, yesterday, this week, last week, last month type thing. OK. The system will update the results every 10 minutes. OK, so you can actually see how you're doing through the day. So it's quite close to real time. OK, so we'll tell you, um, you know, how you're doing potentially compared to other locations in your in the PHA. We also might tell you how you're doing compared to your industry. Depending on the time period you choose, that will define what sort of data you see. OK, so when you're looking at a single day, you won't see things like the hourly and weekly pattern. But when you look at um, this month, last month, this week, that sort of thing, these what we call patterns or heat maps are another way of showing it will show up. OK, and obviously, depending on how much data you select, it'll also dynamically define how many days you can see in these types of charts. OK, so. You will be able to see uh, the different questions you've asked if you've been using the service you know, for long enough that you've asked multiple questions and you will be able to choose the different time periods. But with the quick view, you have limited options on the time periods to today, yesterday, this week, last week, this month, last month, OK? Because it's designed to be a quick overview of how you've been doing recently, OK? So you'll see, we'll, we'll talk about the happy index. We'll tell you how you're doing compared to um, if Again, depending on the time period you select, how you compared to the previous day, the previous week, the previous month. OK. We'll tell you how many responses you got and how many of each button you got. And then we'll give you a bit of a trend of how you're doing compared, you know, um, throughout either the day, week or month. We won't um, be giving you rankings if you don't have access to more than one practice. And then the hourly and the weekly patterns. The idea of these is that it's kind of like a heat map in that if you're seeing a lot of green in the morning, for instance, and so the, these relate to hours um, for the last week. So if you're seeing a lot of green in the morning, you know you're doing a great job in the morning. If you start seeing perhaps a line of red at a certain time of the day, you may find that that's the time of the day where people perhaps aren't as satisfied. That may correlate to when you're at your busiest, and so it may be just just the pressure of, of trying to put people through, but it might just be worth a discussion. So the idea is that the, the data is nice and visible for you to see what's going on. OK, the weekly pattern will show you the last six weeks. And again, this is the days of the week. And again, you may find that, um, you know, you've got lots of green on certain days, but you may get a bit of a row of red on a day as well. And again, that just a discussion point about, OK, well, what do we have going on there? And a lot of times as practice managers, you may know that you have certain things going on those days which put pressure on people about how, you know, the type of quality of care you're delivering. So some of these things may be very obvious, you may already know them, but sometimes it's useful to have that discussion with the rest of the practice when it's in black and white or red and green in this example. OK. So the quick view is it's a quick overview of how you're doing. It works really well when you're looking at on your phone and that sort of thing. So you can see how you went yesterday, today. OK, I talked about industry comparison. Industry comparison would be medical practices 
using Happy or Not around the world, okay? It's not just WA, it's not just Australia, it's not even Australasia, it's, it's around the world. That's quite a big net to cast. So I would take the, that comparison with a, with a grain of salt because you may be comparing to a physio in Northern Europe, okay? But it's just trying to give you a bit of an inkling of, okay, this is you know how you're doing to give you a bit of an oversight in comparison. The other screen that you'll go to is, is the analytics screen, okay? The analytics screen, it's exactly the same data. Obviously, it's for your practice. There's just some more capabilities around, for instance, the time period. So you can go and look at any date period you want. So you can go, you can go and look at you know, the entire year if you've been using the service that long, or you may only want to go and look at a specific week or two weeks, okay? So you have total uh, ability to do that. The results um, are graphed in just slightly different ways in the quick view, okay? The thing to note with the way um, the, the charts work is that you'll see both a, a bar and a line, okay? The bar represents the number of responses that you received on that particular, um, and depending on which time period you selected, it might be hour, like in this one, but it could be day, week, or even month that those bars represent. Again, that will depend on the time period you select, and you'll be able to see at the top of the chart what it's looking at. In this example, you can see it's hours, okay? So I can see, you know, at, at three o'clock, I got, you know, the largest number of responses, and then the blue line represents that happy index that I talked about before, okay? So the blue line relates to the index on the right, the size of the bar, relates to the index on the left. Sometimes when you go on, you may see all of the bars actually at the same height. In that instance, that means that where it says responses here, it's talking about percentages, okay? So you have the option of changing that. I like looking at responses because I like seeing the size of the bar reflecting how many responses I got, as opposed to percentages, all of the bars will be 100%, and that will just be representing what proportion of button pushes you got. So just a slight different way of looking at it, okay? Inside here, you can filter um, time ranges, days of weeks, that sort of thing. So when you look at, um, you know, the, the hourly or the weekly distribution, again, you may find the certain hours of the day or days of the week where you're perhaps not doing as well as others. So you do have the ability to use the filters to filter it on certain hours of the day or certain days of the week, okay? So if you want to go and look at why do we not do as well on Wednesdays, you can actually just go and filter on Wednesdays for an entire year and see what's going on. What it may tell you is that on Wednesdays, when you look at the hourly distribution, it may show you that actually you're not doing as well at sort of 10 o'clock. And that may be different from the distribution of an entire week. So that's a type of thing you can do if you want to, okay? The other thing you can do is you can export the results. So while you'll get weekly and monthly re reports, um, you may want to export the results for, again, a different time period than what you're receiving by email, okay? So you can go in there and there's lots of different options of how you export those results. So I've talked a bit about the different charts and how you know the size of the bar represents the responses. The blue line is the happy index. As far as more information, so when you log on to the reporting portal, down the bottom left, you'll also see a help option. Okay, that will take you to our support website. In the support website, there's lots of videos, there's lots of frequently asked questions, there's lots of tutorials, that sort of thing. So there's lots more information there. The other one that is useful is our handbook. So our handbook is kind of a, I guess, a cheat sheet on how to get going and also some sort of um, questions. So there's lots of information there, okay? The other thing, obviously, obviously you can contact, um, you know, the PHN or the PHA directly, um, but as far as support, so you will see some different email addresses potentially. So when you receive your emails, um, your reports, that sort of thing, you'll see those from support at happyornot.com. You can definitely respond to that and that will create a support case 
um, but just understand that's based in Finland, so they might not might not get back to you um, in you know in in the business hours. Um, otherwise, you can contact us directly through my email address there, or obviously if you go through Kim, that will or one of your practice support team, that'll also make its way to me as well. So, lots of different support. Um, that's kind of all I had today. Were there any questions that anyone had? Uh, well, I think I think a question is coming from Peter Wood. Okay, so that was just a thank you. One question I, I, I was thinking of, of, Derek, that might be useful for the practices. When you were doing the analytics and, and being able to extract the information, for example, they could say focus on a particular day or hour. Yes. Can they also, in that same token, uh, ex extract, that, extract that information per question? So, for example, two months ago the question was, did you, you know? Did you see your G, your GP in a timely fashion today? Um, and they want might focus on a question rather than a particular. You know, um, can they extract that by question as well? Yes, they can. So in the filters at the top here, um, there's three areas. So the location area will generally be the practice. So that will be defined already by who's logs on. But when you click on the survey question, you will see all of the questions that you have potentially asked since you have been using the device. Um, so if you made the time period forever, I think it, I think it says um, unlimited, then as you select the question, it'll just populate the time periods that you asked that question. So as you mentioned that question, you know, you might have asked a question from January to March, um, and then you can just export the results. So whatever you're looking at on the screen in the analytics screen, you will be able to export. And exactly, it, it is grouped by question. So you will better go and look at what was that question we asked at the start of the year, um, the time period. If you select all results, it'll just automatically populate all the results for that particular question. And then you will be able to export those results to share with other people in the practice. Thanks for that, Derek. Um, now, one other question I thought might be helpful, you know, in relation to um, uh, extracting the poster, the QR code, I know I've done that for various practices, you know, um, uh -huh. either the happy link um, or the poster. Can practices do that themselves or that's something that we at Warfare would need to do that for them? No, I'm pretty sure, I'll, I'll double check, but I'm pretty sure you can. So just the same way that you can export results, if you go to the export button, there will be an option for the smiley link. OK, as long as you're looking at the current question. OK, there will be an option there for smiley link, and I'm pretty sure that anyone can do that and I'll and I'll confirm that after this. So what what that smiley link was everyone was that QR code that we talked about before. So what what this export would do with that smiley link is that would produce that poster that you would be able to put up in your um, practice. It would also give you the actual URL code that you could send out in that post appointment communication. So whether that was an email or an SMS for people to also give feedback. So there's a couple of different ways you can use that smiley link. It's either a QR code or a URL, just like a website. OK, so really, really what it is, it's just two ways for people to get to the same website to give feedback to your practice directly. OK. And that's obviously very different to the reporting website that I was talking about a minute ago. And it's also interesting to note, Derek, that some of the practices actually put that URL code on their website, um, particularly in the midst of COVID, um, you know, as well as putting a poster. I thought I received some feedback around that as well. Okay. But also okay. emphasize that, that we actually also, through our comms department, developed a poster. Um, around how to interact with the QR code using either iPhone or Android phone. So I know I'll put that in the chat. So if you want that additional poster to support your practices, then 
you can speak to your facilitator, they can send that to you and you can print that off. Yeah, and I saw that and I thought that was great actually. I actually um, uh, talked to another PHN um, about what you had done there. That was that was a really good example of how to do that because while it is becoming more, um, I guess, used in certain areas, there's definitely certain demographics who may still struggle with it. So making it as simple as possible for people definitely um, takes away uh, any barriers to people doing it. Has anyone else got any other questions this morning? For Derek or myself or anyone else? You can put your hand up or in chat. It looks like there's no other questions. Oh, wait, wait a minute. We've got one. I think Phil would, I know, Phil would are happy. All right then. Look, um, look, thanks very much, Derek. And I've also got this recording, of, you know, recorded so that we can share that. And I'll also arrange for the facilitators to share that with their other practices as well. This is a, a great resource that we can use. Um, it was an excellent session this morning. So I'd like to thank you very much. Just letting your practices know that we're having, running a session on Thursday for the practice support staff. So they can also be um, up to speed and, and become more familiar. So therefore, then they can support you as well. So um, if you, for example, weren't able to attend, any of your staff weren't able to attend today, um, we will share the recording around. So thank you very much for your time, Derek. I really appreciate it. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Have a good day. Bye. Thank you.